come up with whatever that little box is going to be. Now, every single graph that you see on the AP exam is always a 20 by 20 grid. Um, so you can already kind of think to yourself, okay, well, how am I going to do my scaling? Pick a scaling that makes sense to you, something that you can easily count by, and that you're not gonna make mistakes. Um, I find that a lot of students will pick some unique number. I'm gonna do 2.75 because that works out the best. And then they get lost. So pick a number that makes sense to you, okay? Also pick a number that's small enough that you fill up as much of the graph as possible, okay? Um, so in case of this example, we're going all the way up to 60. Okay, so you need to find some way that you can get up to 60 on your graph. And so you say, oh, I'm going to count by tens. If you count by tens, you're only going to end up with the first six squares. That makes your graph really compress, and then it's hard for the readers to actually assess your graph, as well as it's hard for you to ensure that you have the 